Hello, welcome to this Price a Job tutorial. In this video, we'll be taking a look at how to estimate foundations, starting with a traditional trench filled foundation. Before we jump in, let's set up a new project first. We'll click on the project toolbar and add a new project. We'll call this one Foundations and save the project. Now that we've set up a project folder, we can start adding modules. We'll select the first module here from the toolbar from the Foundations category. If we open the Foundation submenu, we'll see that we have options of Trench Foundation, Pad Foundation, Strip Foundation, or Raft Foundation. We'll be starting with the Trench Foundation and click Create. And this opens the Trench Foundation module. On the left, we can see our Foundations folder that we created and the Trench Foundation within it. In the center section, we have our Sketch pane, which we can expand to full screen, as well as our Description pane and estimate pane, all of which can be expanded to full screen. On the side, we have our settings pane with our main stages and all the various module stages associated with it. Currently, we're working on a trench foundation. If after opening the trench foundation module, we want to switch to a pad foundation, we can do so, as well as a strip foundation or a raft foundation. We'll take a look at each of these in other videos, but for now, we'll just focus on the traditional trench foundation. Let's expand our sketch pane to get a closer look. Here in the various dimension fields, if we select these, we'll see indicator arrows on the sketch to show us which dimension is being indicated. Here is the foundation run. Here is the trench width. Here is the excavation depth. And here is the concrete depth. So let's start with the foundation run. We'll set a foundation run of 12 meters and a trench width of 800 millimeters. Excavation depth is already set at 1000 millimeters and we'll leave that as is. And the concrete depth is set at 750 millimeters and we'll leave that as is. Below we have stages for excavation, formwork, reinforcement mesh, disposal of soil and concrete. If any of these stages are unnecessary, for example formwork, we can deselect that and it will be removed from our sketch. Likewise we can also remove the reinforcement mesh. We'll leave everything activated and go through them one by one. Let's start with excavation. Here we have options to excavate the trench by hand or by machine. If using a machine, we can select the machine involved. If we reduce our sketch pane, we can see the estimate here and we can compare the pricing of the excavation by hand and machine. To excavate a 12 meter trench by hand will be approximately 1000 pounds. To do it by machine will only be 665. However, if this was a much shorter trench, let's say it was only a one meter trench, we would see that the prices invert. The price of doing it by hand would be only 83 pounds versus the price of a machine would be 160. And the main reason for this is the cost of the excavator as well as delivery and collection costs. So let's leave our trench set at 12 linear meters and we'll select a machine. If we choose to have a different excavator, we can choose that here and we can compare the prices of each. A micro excavator, approximately the same price. A three ton excavator drops the price a little. And a five ton excavator, the price starts rising up again. If price was the only consideration, a three ton excavator would be the best choice. For our example, however, we'll stick with the one and a half ton. Under the cog symbol here, we can set the various settings for our excavator, including the productivity in cubic meters per hour the delivery and collection cost, and the fuel consumption per hour. These are fairly standard settings based on the machine that you selected, but you can easily adjust these if your situation is any different. Next, let's take a look at the formwork stage. Price Drop has automatically calculated the amount of formwork required for this trench at 24 square meters. And we have the options of selecting either 9mm plywood, 12mm plywood, or 18mm plywood. And as we make these selections, we can see our formwork stage is updated here in the estimate pane. So if we select 9mm plywood, we can see that updated here for the shuttering plywood and our costs are adjusted automatically. Compared to 18mm plywood, the costs approximately double. Then we can specify the timber to be used. We can select either 47 by 50mm, 47 by 75, 47 by 95, or 75 by 75 millimeters, each of which is updated here within the formwork estimate. Let's stick with 47 by 75. 
You'll notice in the formwork that also the labor for erecting and removing the earthwork supports has been included, with the labor assigned to a ground worker for £12.48 per square meter. If we prefer, we can set this per hour, and we can see that the labor estimate is approximately 11 hours at £27 per hour. Next, let's take a look at the reinforcement mesh stage. Again, the system is automatically calculated that will require 19.2 square meters of reinforcement mesh. Here we can choose whether this is single layer or double layer. And again, this is updated within the sketch. Here's the single layer or double layer. Then we can also select the mesh, either A142, A193, A252, A393, or custom mesh. If we're selecting a custom mesh, we can choose one from the drop-down menu, and this shows us the reinforcement mesh within the Price of Job library, including a variety of B category meshes. If you prefer to use a mesh that's not included in the library, you can simply select Edit Pack and add a new material here. Simply fill out the title, the units, the price, the category, and the website link. For our example, let's stick with A393 mesh. Next, we can set the spaces either single chairs or continuous reinforcing bar. For now, let's just stick with single chairs. And we can also adjust the spacing of our chairs here in millimeters. Under the cog function, we have settings to adjust for overlap. Next, let's take a look at the disposal of soil stage. Price Job has automatically calculated the volume of soil to be disposed of as 11.71 cubic meters. This is compared to the excavation volume of 9.6 and the reason for the difference is the soil expansion. Here within the cog settings, we can adjust the expansion rate of the soil, currently set at 22%. For the disposal, we have options to dispose of by either machine or by hand. And similar to what we saw with the excavation, we can check the estimate pane here to compare the prices. To dispose of the soil by hand, 828 pounds, or by machine, 856 pounds. And you'll notice that the price of job system has automatically calculated the number and size of skips required to dispose of this soil. In this case, 1.9 eight yard skips. Now, of course, we can't have only 0.9 of a skip, but if there are other modules that will be using skips for disposal, they will be combined for the total. If this is the only module that we'll be having skips for, we can just click the plus to round that up to the nearest whole number. In that case, two eight yard skips. If we prefer to change the size of skip, we can do that as well. Next, let's take a look at the concrete stage. Again, the system has calculated the volume of concrete required at 7.2 cubic meters. We have options to use either ready mix, mix on site, or a concrete pump. If we're using a ready mix, we can select the mix from the options below. C15, C20, C25, C30, C35, C40, or C45 mix. For this example, we'll stay with C25, which should be strong enough for a foundation. Under the COG settings, we can specify the minimum concrete load and a part load charge. If we were to choose mix on site, then we can select the ratio of mix, either one to three, one to four, one to six, or a custom mix. And here we can input the ratio of cement to ballast. And if we choose a concrete pump, we can select how many pumps will be required. Under the COG settings, we can adjust the productivity in cubic meters per day, the minimum concrete load, and the part load charge. And as well, we can select our concrete mix. And again, C25 should suffice. And similar to above, we can consult our estimate pane here and can compare our costs. So the concrete pump would be about 1,700 pounds, mix on site, 1,600, or ready mix, 1,200. For this example, we'll stick with the concrete pump. And in each case, as we've been making our changes, the estimate has been updating with our materials, our labor, and our plant and tool. If your specific situation requires materials or labor not shown, it's simple enough to add that to the estimate. Let's say, for example, for the reinforcement mesh, that we need to add some extra materials. So here, under the reinforcement mesh pane, we can add materials, add new labor, add new plant and tool, or add other new costs. So let's go ahead and add a new material and this opens the materials library. So here we can search from the library. Let's type in rebar. And let's select some 20 millimeter reinforcement steel bars 
and that is added to our materials list. And then here under quantity, we can adjust the quantity required. Let's say we'll need 25 meters. Optionally, we can just add a material here by typing it manually. So for example, let's say we need some red oxide primer. And for that, we can just set our quantity at two and set the price at six pounds 80. And this is automatically calculated within our estimate as well. Now you will notice that the icons beside each of the materials have a different color. These orange icons indicate the material is found within the price of job library. The gray icon indicates that this material has been added manually. If we have to input a material that we're using frequently, we may choose to add that to the price of job library. We can do that by selecting the cog function and choosing add to library. And here we can set the title, net price and category. If we need to override any of the pricing here, we can do so. For example, let's adjust the pricing of this to 18 pounds per meter. And when we do so, this is highlighted in yellow to let us know that there's been a price override. If we want to reset that back to the standard price within the price of job library, we could just select the cog and reset. Now, if you have multiple trench foundations that you need to pour, we can identify this one by adjusting the title. So let's just click on the title here within the main stage. And for trench foundation, we'll call this main house. And this gets updated in our folder. Now, if we have several trench foundations, this will help us to identify which foundation this is referring to. Next, you may have noticed that our description pane has been automatically updating as we fill in the various criteria. So for example, for disposal of soil, we have disposal of surplus excavated material offsite. If we deselect this, that is removed from the description. And instead we have an item here that says disposal of surplus excavated materials not included and it's indicated with a red X showing an exclusion. If we untick the auto description, we can actually edit this manually. There's a basic text editor here with various formatting tools as well as various symbols. And we can input these as a check mark to show an inclusion or an A for allowance. And we would use this in a scenario where we're not sure of the price. So for example, we might put an allowance of 80 pounds per cubic meter of concrete. Or we might use the red X as an exclusion to show something like formwork not included. However, it's important to note that if we have deselected the auto descriptions, that any other changes that we make will not be automatically updated within the description. So if we have any other changes to make, we're best to save our manual notes for last. Furthermore, if we reactivate the auto description, our manual comments will be removed, although any changes we make will be updated to the description. So as a best practice, just save your manual notes for last. If you prefer, you can just simply add a note here and you still have all the same symbols for included allowance or exclusions. For example, formwork not included. And this note will persist despite any changes that we make to our stages. So here we'll deselect the formwork it's been removed from the description, but our manual note still remains. If you only need to make an estimate calculating the labor, you can do so using the filter icon here. So just click on the filter and here we can select whether we are estimating the cost of materials or labor or plant and tool. So for example, perhaps for this job, the materials will be supplied. We can deselect the materials and that removes all of the materials from our various estimates but it should be noted that this filter is for this module only. Any other modules that we create, we'll have to remember to deselect the materials manually. If we prefer, we can use the global filters here, and we have the same filters to deselect materials not included, or labor, or plant and tool, or other costs. But any changes we make here to the global filters will affect all modules. So for this case, we'll make sure that our materials are still included and we'll just close the filters. Another filter we can deselect is our profit. If we deselect this box here, this removes all the profit included in our various estimates. We'll select that again, and we'll see all of our costs change. Deselected and selected. If we'd like to adjust our profit margins, we can select the cog settings here, 
And here we can adjust the margins for our materials, our labor, our plant and tool and other costs. And we can also specify whether we are VAT registered. If we select yes, then VAT is added to our subtotal. If not, then VAT is added incrementally to all of our various costs. So we'll be sure to keep this selected as yes. Once we're done, we can consult the reports tab to see our quote. And here we can change the title of our quote if we prefer to call this a quotation or a proposal. And we can choose to show either a simple quote or advanced. And there are various levels of pricing we can show. Here we can show just the basic pricing at the bottom, or if we can select mid-level pricing for each module or complete breakdown of pricing as well. And we also have the option to display the description, the breakdown of materials, the breakdown of labor, the breakdown of plant and tool, and other costs. And we can also choose to show the prices or the units. We can also select to show the icons or not. We can add any specific notes that we wish to add. And we can even adjust the formatting of our bullet points. Right now it's set to auto. We can set that also for bullet points, circles, diamonds, squares, arrows, or none. We'll leave that set to auto. Oftentimes the customer only wants to see the simple breakdown with the description of the work to be performed. When you're done, you can print your proposal, export it as a PDF, export it as a Word document, or email it directly to your client from within Price a Job. And that's how to use the Trench Foundation module. Thank you for using Price a Job.